Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host Phil Rowley. On today's show we're fishing one of the over 90 lakes located in the Matsu region of Alaska, Alaska's Stillwater Capital. Today it's sinking lines. We're going to show you everything you need to know about using sinking lines. We've got dragonflies on the move. It's the perfect time to use a sinking line. Stick around, it's going to be a great show. Look at that fish. Very good fish. Another fine, uh, beautiful steelhead taken here. This is a, a good example of the family Haptogenae day. This is why you need a lot of backing. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Orvis. Ontario, yours to discover. Islander Precision Fly Reels. On today's show, the new fly fisher crew visits the Matsu region of Alaska near the towns of Palmer and Wasilla. This region, only a short drive from Anchorage, boasts over 90 easily accessible lakes, home to rainbow, grayling, arctic char, even Pacific salmon. The beauty of the area is incredible, with majestic mountains, wildlife, and fantastic stillwater fly fishing. Joining me today is Bob Andre, owner of the Trout's Place and Windbreak Cafe in Wasilla. Bob's enthusiasm and intimate knowledge of the lakes in the area will be paramount to my success. of using these sinking lines is we can use this clear intermediate to work the shallow water earlier in the day. Sunlight comes up in case we've got wind seems to be dropping here and it's getting calmer. Those fish are going to be a little more suspicious of coming into the shallow so they'll move to the edges or into that 10, 12, 14 feet of water and we can just change our sinking line uh, choice up to perhaps a slightly faster sink rate and go down and get them. All right, so we're going to count this down. So what that means is I'm going to make my cast. Again, transfer the line up into the fingers. A couple of quick rips to straighten out the line. And I'm just actually going to use my watch. And we'll start with 20 seconds. And just let that sink down. And that's the countdown method. Let it sink for 10 count, retrieve the fly. 15 count, retrieve the fly. 20 count, retrieve the fly. How many counts down was that one? Well, the, the, this one I had brought in and let the, just the, the, the angle shift to 45, yeah. so it, I brought it in on a regular strip for about 10 and then I stopped and I let it go down, maybe to a, like a 10 count. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you've got that fly line moving up through the water like, oh, there, there go. we go, this I stopped a, it. A, a to explain, oh, this feels like a good fish, yeah, that was a, this feels angle. like this a good fish. This one's, I might have to pull the anchor on this one. Oh, this this is, oh yeah, this one's, <laughs> look at the water out there. We'll keep the rod tip high to give him drag, but he's got high rod tip, and then I'll give him side pressure. But whatever I got here, it's it's feeling heavy, and it's not coming what, in anytime soon. I tell you what, Bill, I, I, just because it's happened to me, I'm pulling the bank an back anchor. Yep. For some reason, when I'm doubled anchored and I get a big fish, it is the back anchor that's going to get him. Well, he just pounded this. Like I say, I stopped, and then it just got heavy, and then that rod tip. You see the throb, 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 and you kind of it look was at exciting. You, you look at your rod tip going, what's going on with that? Well, it's this is Finger Lake. Yeah. This is, you know, we're, we're right between Boisseau and Palmer. <laughs> and uh, well, like I say, we're not even, I, I checked, it was, I think, nine minutes from the time I fired up the, the van to oh, yeah. uh, sitting on the, on the lake shore. Nine minutes. 
We have oh, this is a nice trout fishing. Look this at this. This is a nice fish. Yeah, this is what you're gonna. I'm gonna go back, and people are gonna go Alaska. Yeah, there's some great lake fishing there. What about the river fishing? Alaska has rivers. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at this. Look this at is this. a nice fish. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's got to be. There you go. <laughs> Congratulations. That's as good as any rainbow I've caught anywhere else in North America. Guys, Holy this is smoke. a quality Matsu Valley still, fish. Stillwater capital of Alaska right okay. here. That carry again. That fish is a good 24 inches. This is typical. Look at the size of that fish. <laughs> Got to come to Alaska for this. <laughs> the Matsu region. Rent a car. Bring your flow tube. Good collection of dragon nymphs and some sinking lines. You can get fish like this. Look at that. God, that's magnificent. That's a big male. Let him beauty. recover. It is a beauty. Yeah. Oh, 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 I want to get a still shot. Oh, for, uh, he's look. gone. I, I, <laughs> I need to get one of those on the camera. Sure. For, uh, we'll put that up. Post it up. But, uh, yeah, because you've got that all on the website for your... Oh, yeah. For your... Uh, for your hotel, the Trout's Place, how appropriately named. <laughs> so that was about 20 counts down. I'm gonna move the boat back around to the back here again. And 20 counts down and then strip out the slack. And then I stopped it. And as soon as that fly stopped, that fish was on it. On today's show, we're using a seven and a half foot leader attached to a clear intermediate sinking line. Using a triple surgeon's knot, we attached approximately 18 inches of 8.2 pound fluorocarbon tippet. When attaching the fly, we chose a non-slip loop knot as this gives the fly added action during the retrieve. The takes were quite vicious and the weeds were thick, so we used the heaviest tippet we could get away with without spooking the fish. Uh, it does pay to count down. I mean, if you start at maybe 10, 1,000, 1,000, 2, and you work your way till you find the area that the fish are in that zone, and you'd be surprised you go back, there'll be more. Well, when you think about it, you know, we get so excited and we don't let our fly sink long enough, and these lines sink at two inches per second. Well, that's going to take six seconds to go a foot. Exactly. So it's, it's, you know, that seems like an incredible, it's like standing in a lineup. It seems to take forever. And whether you're chronomid fishing with long lines and uh, floating lines rather and long leaders or you know using sinking lines like we are today, you got to let them sink and, and count whether you count mentally or use your watch, but be very systematic. You know, know the sink yeah. rates of your lines so you can get the flies down there and let them sink long enough. A little tip for sinking line techniques, you know, sinking line diameters are you know, tend to be finer, uh, especially the faster the sink rates, and they can be prone to tangling. At times, that's just the nature of the line, but, you know, in the boat here, I've got a little wash basket, and just line the bottom of that basket with water, a thin skim coating, and that'll keep the fly line uh, from tangling. A wet towel works good, too. Scooting through the water. Got him. Oh, there you go. Oh, we nice got him. fish, Bob. We got him on the nice black fish. leech. Yeah, you can see that right in the jaws. Let me get my fly out yeah. of there. Oh, he's going. Maybe we okay. get a double header. <laughs> nice fish. You no, know, we let it go down again. He was uh, definitely on that shelf over there. Yep. Oh, he's... Well, I've got the net over here. We can pull him right over. Just... Oh. <laughs> this. Oh, oh. Don't do it to me. Oh, you're on this side. Yep. Banker's been my demise. There We've got we him. Oh, go. we got him. Okay. Finger just, Lake, the Matsu Valley. Over right over here. Look at this. Can make show the folks got. at home what you've got there. Look at Very that fish. Exciting. That is just a stunning. Let me get him out of the water. Stunning for a second. Second. Get him in the water like again. Look at that. Gonna... Oh! <laughs> he uh, didn't uh, need to be yeah, revived. He's, uh, he's, he's pretty energetic, me, but, uh, I think. <laughs> definitely was on the black leech, and we let it go down 20 seconds. It started to strip. Thank you, Mr. Phil. <laughs> Thank you. That was a good one. Thank you. Yeah.
Here's a good sampling of some dragonfly patterns you may want to consider. Dragonfly nymphs are fun to imitate and fun to tie. Starting at the bottom, we have the good old Kerry Special. It's been around for decades, suggestive pattern that still performs well today. The next row are some of the sprawling nymphs. Generally constructed out of buoyant materials such as deer hair because they're needed to keep the fly suspended off the bottom as these nymphs are quite sedentary in nature. The top ones are probably those dragonfly nymphs most fly fishers are familiar with and those are the climbers or darner nymphs. These are aggressive and large, generally sizes 8 through 4. And this is the pattern we used uh, today quite successfully, just a, a foam variation of a carry special if you will. This is the bunny dragon, the dragon and the butler's bug. All of these flies are excellent dragonfly nymph imitations and should be considerations in your fly box, especially when using sinking lines. What we're imitating to here today on Finger Lake, uh, located uh, a good six minutes from Wasilla, is uh, our dragonfly nymphs. And dragonfly nymphs, we're imitating the large climbing nymphs. Uh, very hourglass shape, they get big, a uh, good two inches plus. We're casting out using uh, clear intermediate lines, letting that line sink down, and we're imitating how they move. And dragonfly nymphs are aggressive predators. They stalk their prey like a cat. So we're using steady hand twist retrieves, injures dispersed with strips because they can take water in through their abdomen and eject it out their back and scoot through the water with a little sort of Mother Nature's afterburner system. So we're using a varied retrieve, hand twist, they're plodding along, a couple of quick strips to imitate them darting away, and the takes are not aggressive, but they're solid. They come in and it's just as a heavy weight on the end and an awful lot of head shaking. So it's the ticket. So a varied retrieve as with most still water applications, hand twist, spurt, hand twist, hand twist, spurt, keep it varied and uh, see which one the fish likes best. I'm just trying my favorite knot. The one I use exclusively is the non-slip loop knot. So I've just tied an overhand knot an uh, inch or so above the tag end. Place the tag end through the eye of the hook, take that tag end back through the monofilament loop, draw the fly and the loop together, just like your traditional clinch knot. Generally the finer the tippet, the more times around. Back through the overhand loop, pull, draw it tight, a little bit of moisture to avoid any heat, and there you go. I just got to trim the tag end, and that fly can swing and move freely. Good to go. A nice 45 degree angle. That's when things have been happening here with this clear intermediate. And twist it back, see if we can get a fish to follow. And I'd love to come up right at the last second and wallop the fly. So I'm hoping that happens right now. Ticking weeds every once in a while, so I can give a couple of quick rips to strip the fly line up through the water column a little bit and skip above the weed tops. Oh, there he is out there. Yeah, he's out going out to sea, and now he's taking line. I'm going to back off the drag a little bit. Yeah, he's... Uh, Oh yeah, he's into my backing now. Oh yeah, this is a good fish, Bob. This is a really good fish. But he's into my backing. You see the orange backing? Oh, oh, and yeah, he this is, is taking line. This is a big fish. This is a quality fish, so I want to... He's going to try and... My goodness, you guys. Yeah, he's uh, well into my backing here. We may have to drift off and go over to him, because my fear is that long stem weed, that'll be his next stop. Is you can still feel them. What I think. Yep, we lost them. My goodness. He got me into the weeds and blew me up. That's, that's fishing. That's what brings <laughs> you back here. That brings me back. That, that was a you good, back. good that's fish. 
Those and he, fish. he ran me into the weeds and that's the risk. You know, yeah. we're fishing long stemmed vegetation. You can see it right here. And this, this is gonna happen, but. Actually, you know what he did? He broke me. He eventually pulled to the point and broke me off. So he's gonna drop the anchor again. So I was wrapped around that uh, front there. Gone. <laughs> oh. So, well, that was just the dragon nymph, yeah. a dark one, about a number six. And uh, I think I've got a, another version here, so I think I'll be. That's a beautiful looking dragon. And what it is, we've got uh, crystal chenille and uh, a dark olive dubbing. Uh, the Stillwater Solutions uh, dark uh, olive green twisted together over a foam underbody. It's got uh, dyed olive pheasant rump that suggests the legs, lots of action, and uh, a piece of sheet foam that I've trimmed and folded over the head to form the gape. So it's got a buoyant core to it and I can skip it through and over the weeds and just a steady hand twist and that big fish just whacked it. So hopefully we'll go see if we can uh, get his cousin, because I don't think I'll be getting that fly back anytime soon. Every Stillwater fly box should include a selection of dragonfly nymphs. The buoyant nature of the foam dragon allows it to be presented in and around weed beds and sunken debris. Here is the pattern recipe for those interested in adding a few foam dragons to their own fly boxes. When fly fishing the lakes in the Matsu region, you should bring rods in the 5 to 7 weight range. Large arbor reels are recommended for battling these spirited heavyweight fish. Bring a number of lines so you can be ready for any still water scenario. We recommend floating, clear intermediate, and a range of density compensated sinking lines, type 4 through 6 sink rate. When you work in sinking lines, you have to adjust your casting slightly because you can't pick them up and uh, begin the casting stroke as easily as you would with a floating line. What you have to do a lot of times is literally roll the fly to the top, especially with fast sinking lines, do what's called a roll pickup, get that fly aerialized, back off to the target. So you use that roll pickup to roll the fly up near the surface where you can pick it up, quickly aerialize it, and get it back into the game. When I'm fly fishing still waters, my, one of my favorite tactics, especially when using sinking lines, is to make a cast that goes across the angle of the ripple. We've got a slight breeze here today on Finger Lake. We're just outside the uh, town of Wasilla, Alaska. And what this does is present the fly in a broad uh, profile or plan view and silhouetting itself because my, the fish will s orientate themselves uh, head up into the wind uh, looking for prey items. So this is a great way to bring your fly right across in front of their faces and hopefully get a take. We got a nice oh, fish. That's a gorgeous fish. It was on the, uh, the last second. It, look at, there, he's a beauty. Oh. Before, there he goes. Okay, well, he's, he's being a, polite and staying out. So he's, look, he's doing me a major favor. I'll get this thing in just for you guys to take a look at this. This is a Finger Lake trout. And, uh, oh, look at him. Oh, what a trout. Gorgeous. This is a... This is why you come to this. to the Matsu region. As we've said, the Stillwater capital of Alaska. This is him. Oh, well, I thought go. so. And he's going to try and take you for a run through the forest. I'm give him one. Wow, let's give him was the first cast with it and I, I happen to think that the angle is everything of today. Yeah, it's that's it's, quite often the case. It's depth and angle. And, and so you get it to the depth that they're cruising around and for whatever reason that 45 um, suggests something fleeing from them or perhaps something emerging and they so pounce bad. on it. Where you go Phil, you got him. Get him. Landed. Holy, Holy cow. That is, is a high quality rainbow. A Matsu Valley That's, trout. And, uh, I'll let you do the honors, Bob. And my get... friends wanted to know why I gave up river fishing. I want you to take a look. 
This is worth a thousand words. Take a look at him. Is he a gorgeous or what? Probably never been caught. Just incredible. These are the things you just have to take pictures of. There we go. There he goes. Thank you so much. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Slimy gloves, but it worked out. And again, Holy just cow. the value of sinking lines in lakes and playing not only with the sink rate to find the depth, but even choosing a line to vary the angle. As you can see, very, very effective. Today on Finger Lake, we were double anchored on a saddle between two points in approximately six to eight feet of water. Using a clear intermediate line, we cast into 12 to 14 feet of water above a large pot of McGeaton bed. Factoring in the two inch per second sink rate of the clear intermediate line, we allowed our flies to sink approximately 25 seconds, so they tracked four to five feet deep. Using a slow to moderate paced hand twist retrieve, we skipped the fly above and through the weed tops. Fish often followed the fly to the boat, grabbing it as we hung the fly momentarily before recasting. Well everyone, it's been a long but rewarding day. It's after 11 o'clock if you can believe it. Look at the light, we could probably fish for another four or five hours. But we're hungry, the mosquitoes are starting to get a little thick, so it's time to go. I hope you enjoyed today's show on how to use sinking lines in still waters. Hopefully you can improve your own still water fly fishing. For more information on this and other shows in our informative series, please visit us on the World Wide Web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. We'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Orvis. Ontario, yours to discover. Islander Precision Fly Reels.